Our first World Heritage Site in Maharashtra is also India's most recently added site, the Victorian Gothic and Art Deco Ensembles of Mumbai. Located in a large cluster around the fort area of downtown Mumbai, this beautiful group of 94 buildings from the 19th and early 20th centuries is a legacy of the British colonial period. Rich with cash from exports and other business, the local government constructed enormous grand buildings to make the city of Bombay world-renowned. And there's some incredible buildings here. Particular highlights of the Victorian Gothic style include the Bombay High Court, the University of Mumbai, the City Civil and Sessions Building, and the incredible Chhatrapati Shivaji Terminus Railway Station, which is actually also a separate World Heritage Site. Many of the early 20th century Art Deco buildings are residential, so they're not open to the public, but many of them still look out onto the famous Oval Maiden cricket grounds, and they're an integral part of modern Mumbai. Next up, we have Chhatrapati Shivaji Terminus, or CST, a rare example of two World Heritage Sites in the same building. It's the main train station in Mumbai, and the main train station in Western India, really. It took 10 years to build, and it was opened in 1887 to celebrate the Golden Jubilee of Queen Victoria. And right up until 1999, the station was actually still known as Victoria Terminus. The building itself is a supreme example of Victorian Gothic architecture, and it's partly based on St Pancras railway station in London. The attention to detail here is just marvellous. There's beautiful domes, arches, statues and turrets both inside and out. And there's also a magnificent entry gate loaded with symbolism because it's crowned by a British lion and an Indian tiger. Located on an island in the middle of Mumbai Harbour, just a short boat ride from the iconic Gateway of India, stands Elephanta Caves. This World Heritage Site covers five man-made caves dug directly into the side of a mountain. These caves are dedicated to the worship of Shiva, one of the main Hindu gods, and they're a spectacular sight to behold. The main cave here is immense roughly square shaped and about 40 meters on each side and nearly 10 meters high inside. The walls are all covered in carvings depicting the stories of Shiva done with exquisite detail. But the real highlight here is the Trimurti, a six meter tall relief sculpture of a three headed Shiva. This incredible artwork depicts the three personifications of Shiva, Brahma the creator, Vishnu the protector and Agora the destroyer. During our month in India we saw a lot of Hindu artwork and this was definitely one of the most impressive. Next up in Maharashtra is the incredible Ajanta Caves, a group of about 30 man-made caves, the oldest of which dates back to the 2nd century BC. Entirely dedicated to Buddha, 
these caves contain a mixture of temples, shrines, and monasteries, and they're all located in a single cliff face above the curve of a river. It's a truly spectacular site, and the cave interiors are really something special. There's intricate carvings, relief statues, sculptures, rock art, and there's even a few paint fragments as well that decorate the insides. It's a really fantastic place to spend the entire day just wandering around and exploring each of the caves thoroughly as they're all really different and really interesting. Our final stop in Maharashtra is another set of religious caves, Ellora Caves. Now this is an enormous set of man-made caves, well over a hundred in fact, and they mostly date from around the 5th to the 10th centuries. What's really interesting here though is that the caves aren't dedicated to a single religion. The site contains Buddhist temples, Hindu temples, and Jain temples as well. Now the size, the artwork, the precision, and the detail are all amazing, but the true highlight here is Cave 16. Now this cave, dedicated to Shiva, is absolutely enormous, and it's carved out of a single rock. Every surface is covered in detailed carvings, with pillars, arcades, reliefs, and even a heavily decorated roof and ceiling as well. It's a real marvel of architecture and it leaves you absolutely astonished at the skill of the builders who designed and created it. Mm -hmm. 